thank you to uh, Pastor Newton and Pastor Lani for the uh, invitation to be with you tonight. And uh, God bless you to all those that are uh, online right now and particularly the other apostles and prophets. Uh, I noticed uh, Apostle Alan Wills on there and uh, others. So uh, I give honour to those and uh, just believe that the Lord is uh, doing something in this world today that uh, is going to be truly an answer to all our prayers. And I wanted to just share some things that I was at the Australian Prophetic Council recently and uh, shared what the Lord had put on my heart as to what this season is all about. And I want to say firstly that 2022 is what I call a tipping point year. Uh, it is a, a year, a significant year in which decisions that are made or not made will have long-term consequences across all areas of society around the world, in the church and in the family, in your own personal life. And if you make the right decisions, it will lead to breakthrough and blessing for believers. But for those who are compromised or lukewarm, those who have not listened to the lessons God wants them to learn, they're going to be in for a more difficult season because faith is being tested right now. And if you respond correctly, then the test of faith will produce reward. But if you don't respond correctly, that test of faith is just going to grind and test and sift uh, people until they get things right in their heart, in their lifestyle. And in particular, I refer you to Haggai chapter one, where the Lord said to the uh, people of God in that day, he said, consider your ways. And this is a message to the church right now. Consider your ways. This is a message to the Christian, to the family, to the nations of the world. Because I tell you, nations, businesses, uh, even scientists are just making crazy decisions right now that do not please the Lord. And uh, when you make a wrong decision, guess what? It'll have wrong consequences. So, so God wants people to change what he is leading them to change. He, He's wanting to hear his voice. He's wanting to make good decisions that lead to good consequences. And when you do the things that God wants you to do, when you change what God wants you to change, in the case of Haggai, they, they were being selfish in their lifestyle. They were not honoring the kingdom of God or the house of God. And uh, they found themselves in a place where they had holes in their pockets. They were frustrated and disappointed. Uh, with their way of life but when they got it right when they did what God wanted when they put the kingdom of God first when they put his righteousness first when they put obedience first they moved from Haggai chapter one that testing difficult time they moved into Haggai chapter two and in Haggai chapter two uh, one of the key promises is from this day forth I will bless you but it also says the most important promise to me, the desire of all nations will come. Jesus will come. Jesus will come and visit. It says the glory of the latter house will be greater than the former. So whatever uh, high mountains of achievement that, or high blessings that you have had in the past, God will do far more than that as you step into Haggai chapter 2. It says the silver and the gold is mine. There will be the provision of God for every need and every good purpose. And we give the Lord thanks and praise for this. So this is all about uh, Holy Spirit calling people to put first things first. Uh, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. So 2022 is a time of making the right decisions. And understanding the decisions that are being made are going to have long-term consequences. The second aspect of uh, this year, 2022. I believe it's a year of divine reward for believers, divine reward. And uh, two years ago, just before COVID, the Lord spoke to me and said the church and the world were going into a significant season in which faith would be tested. If they responded correctly, it would be stretched and then it would be rewarded. And in 2022, I believe we are coming to that place where faith is going to be rewarded where God is stepping into people's lives and saying, I'm here with my reward. And uh, you can receive that if you've been standing in faith for God, if you've been persisting in faith, if you've been continuing 
to believe, continuing to give, continuing to serve, continuing to confess, continuing to decree, then the Lord says, your time of reward is at hand. And this reward of the Lord will include the prophet's reward. In other words, that which has been prophesied, that which has just been promised, that which has been decreed, and also the righteous man's reward, which is the manifestation of that which has been prayed for and contended for and sown towards. And uh, I'll say a bit more about that uh, also. Now, of course, there are people who are going to stay in the test of faith because the unholy trinity is getting more fierce. The world, the flesh and the devil are getting more sinful, more deceitful, more anti-Christian. And so I'm not saying we'll ever be in a situation where there'll be no tests of faith. But what I am saying is that there is a, a time right now where the reward of the Lord, just as Daniel prayed, and the reward was immediately sent from heaven, but there was a battle in the heavenlies before the reward was manifest on earth for him. That was 21 days, and that's the season you're in right now. So you're doing exactly what Daniel did. He persisted until the reward was manifest in his life. And I believe that this is uh, uh, what you're going to experience in this year of uh, 2022. A keynote verse is uh, Isaiah 40, verse 10. I shared this at the uh, Australian Prophetic Council. Listen to Isaiah 40, verse 10. The Lord God will come with might and his arm will rule for him. Most certainly his reward and recompense is with him and his restitution accompanies him. The ERV version of the Bible says, he will bring rewards for his people. He will have their payment with him. And I believe that these rewards will reveal the much more that God has in store for us. And you can look up verses like Matthew 7, 11, Luke 11, 13, Romans 5, 15, 17, and 20. And uh, these verses all talk about the much more of God. And, and I see as people step from Haggai chapter 1 into Haggai chapter 2, it's like their covenant relationship with God goes up another level from where they know God as Jehovah Jireh, their provider, to where they know him as El Shaddai, the God of miracles, the God of more than enough, hallelujah, the God of Ephesians 3.20, the God who does exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. And so as you make those decisions to get your life in line with what God wants, then you're going to step into that uh, God of El Shaddai being manifest in your life. One of the specific rewards that Holy Spirit really laid on my heart uh, was for that of household salvation and to believe that that God is going to move to see whole families come to the Lord, to see backsliders restored, to see where there's uh, one or two Christians in a family, the others will come, even where there's been estrangement uh, of, uh, of relationship, that there will be restoration between family members. And I believe that is a specific reward, just like we see in uh, Malachi chapter 4, the last verse really of the Old Testament, the heart of the fathers turning to the children, the heart of the children turning to the fathers. This is a representation of family reconciliation. And I believe that we're in a season of a Malachi 4 revival, a healing revival around the world. Hallelujah. And um, uh, for tonight, uh, I, I'm just going to focus on some aspects of biblical things that are related to the reward of the Lord. And these are things that will help you focus your faith and they will help you uh, excite your faith for receiving the reward of the Lord. One of the first of these uh, is unity. The Bible says in unity, God commands the blessing. And that blessing includes the reward of your faith. It includes fresh oil to refresh you, to heal you, to bless you, to help you, to energize you and anoint you for a new season. And, and I believe that some of that fresh oil that the Lord is pouring out is to help people come into unity. It's to soften areas of hardness. Now, that might be in you or it might be in a family member. It might be in some other person in your church, in your business environment, in your nation. But the Holy Spirit is working to take the heart of stone and make it a heart of flesh. Hallelujah. And, and you can believe God for that. You can count on God for that. You, you can't 
manipulate people. You can't make people be different from what they are. All you can do is guard your own heart. From out of it flow all the issues of life. You've got to keep your heart soft. You've got to keep your heart pure. You've got to keep your heart loving and giving and forgiving and so forth. But, but I believe this is one of the aspects of the move of the Spirit, the reward of the Lord, is that Holy Spirit is pouring out this fresh oil. He's commanding the blessing and some of that fresh oil is going to soften areas of hardness in people because unity is a key to peace and pleasantness. Unity, you know, how pleasant it is when people dwell together in unity. God's going to help to bring that about. Unity is a key to anointing, refreshing, blessing, progress and increase. And that means unity within yourself. So one of the blessings and the reward of the Lord is coming to help people be at peace with themselves. And if you're a leader in the house, you've already got your act together. Hallelujah. I hope you have. Amen. <laughs> but there are others that we know who need to come to peace within themselves. It might be peace in their body. It certainly could be peace in their mind or in their attitudes or uh, in their feelings or in the confusion and so forth. God can just come in a sovereign move of his Holy Spirit and bring people into unity with themselves, bring them into unity with others in their life, their family, their leaders. You know, if you're a leader, you can be believing for unity in your congregation or your workplace. You know, if, you're, if there's other areas where there's these tensions and stresses, you can just believe and call down God's peace. Jesus said, pray. And he used a commanding language when he gave the Our Father prayer. He used a, a, the, the mood of the Greek. I'm not a Greek scholar, but I can read about things. And, and it's an imperative mood. And it means you command your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And you use your faith to call heaven down to earth to bring that peace. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. But I also want to say part of the decisions that people have to make in order to go from Haggai chapter one, Haggai chapter into Haggai chapter two is, will I pay the price for unity? Will I lay down my life? Will I down my agenda? Will I lay down my ideas? Will I lay down my ways for the sake of unity? Will I let the pastor make the decisions that God wants him to make? Or will I resist him or, you know, say, oh, why can't we do it my way instead of your way? Or as uh, one who wants to see unity, will I lay out the, uh, the welcome mat for people who are different? Will I go out of my way to build relationship? You know, will I pay the price for unity? And I want to say at this time, in terms of unity, I believe there's a fresh breath of the spirit and, and, and just awakenings to the importance of the prayer of agreement. That's what you're all doing tonight. Hallelujah. You're coming into agreement. You know how incredibly powerful that is in, in uh, Matthew 18, where it's talking about whatever you ask in agreement, God will answer it. And whenever you do ask, the Holy Spirit will manifest the Lordship and presence of Jesus. And if you want to know the rewards of unity, you should also look at Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 12. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 12. People have used this for marriages, but you look at it and use Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 12 for your family, for your church, for your business, whatever. I tell you, it'll, it'll encourage your faith in a great way. So part of this uh, reward of the Lord is to bring people into unity and also to have the Holy Spirit bringing people. This is a, a powerful word God's had me praying a lot about uh, in the last, say, 12 months, and that is this, alignment. So unity is you're in alignment with God's workers. But the other dimensions of alignment that the Holy Spirit wants to bring you into, and, and this is all part of this, God working all things together for good in your life. But in order for him to work all things together for good in your life, one of the things you need to experience is to be in alignment with God's word, with God's will, with God's ways, and with God's when. Now, when, when you come into alignment, firstly in unity with God's workers, but secondly in alignment with his word, his will, his ways, his when, that's when God will bless whatever you put your hand to do. 
That's when all things work together for good. That's when you come into alignment with his good plans and his eternal purposes and what God wants to happen for you and around you and through you will start happening and manifesting in your life. There are some other people who will experience the reward of the Lord are those who have persevered in faith. They've overcome adversity. They've overcome opposition. They've overcome negativity within themselves and in their outer world, in their family, in their business, in their community. And this is part of what the prayer that Pastor Lawani put up before, you know, taking authority over the enemy. I want to refer you to Hebrews 10, verses 35 to 38. Oh, what incredible, powerful verses they are. It says, if we persevere, then the Lord will come quickly with his reward. If you persevere, the Lord will come quickly with his reward. Now, look, I think these verses are so important. I'm just going to look them up and read them to you. And one of the things that it says, if he shrinks back, the Lord will take no pleasure in him. And look, for people that are going to a, a midweek prayer meeting, they're not shrinking back. You know, for people that are uh, holding on to God, they're not in any danger of, of the Lord uh, being unhappy with them. In fact, he's, he's rejoicing over you with joy. But listen to this uh, uh, passage. Therefore, do not throw away your confidence, which has great reward. For you have need of endurance, that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised. Now, here's the anointing that I'm talking about in this next verse, verse 37, this season of reward. Verse 37, Hebrews 10. For yet in a very little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. But my righteous one will live by faith. If he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not among those who shrink back to destruction, but those who have faith for the safekeeping of the soul. So I believe this is a year when your persistence of faith is going to be rewarded. Your breakthrough is going to come. Hallelujah. And, and certainly... Uh, in terms of that, who's going to receive this reward of the Lord? It's those who have persevered in stewarding the word of the Lord that's been given to them, that whether it's been given through a revelation from the Logos, whether it's been given through a visiting prophet, whether it's been given by a Holy Spirit revelation while you've been in prayer or something. But, but look, for all of us, there are things that you hold on to. I, I know in our family, we once... Uh, had confirmed to us by two different witnesses, two different prophetic witnesses, your children will return from the land of the enemy. And, you know, whatever it may be, then you've just got to be saying, yes, Lord, uh, I thank you that this is the time when we will receive the prophets we roared. We have, we have taken seriously what you have spoken to us. We've held fast to the word of the Lord, even in difficult circumstances of life. And, Lord, we believe that now is the time for that prophet's reward to be released, the, the righteous man's reward of, of answered prayer. Hallelujah. That's James 5, where it talks about the righteous man. And, and it, it, the righteous man is not just Elijah, such a great, incredible man, single-handed, uh, you know, stopping the rain and starting it again. No, the righteous man is you. <laughs> the righteous man is me. The righteous man is every believer. We all have the, this righteousness of God in Christ, hallelujah. And so we're all entitled to that reward of the righteous man. And the reward is the same reward that Elijah received, which was answered prayer. And uh, I can say one of these things that the church has got to be aware of these days and, and where we're into alignment with the word of God, where we're holding on to the word of God. It's like in these end days, the enemy has released an army of lying spirits into the world. And is the spirit of deception is just touching so many people. I mean, we know media, government, churches, um, uh, scientists even, you know, whatever, whoever. Uh, there's just spirit of deception, as it was in Ahab's day, where the demon said, I, I know how you can, you can get rid of this guy. Let's send all these lying spirits. But there was the true prophet, Micaiah. And he foretold what would happen. And so uh, we've got to hold on to God's truth and not be swept along by the lies of this world system. One of the things that's important is that you don't let your mind be influenced by the bombardment 
of the world's information. But, you know, you're keeping your eyes on the Lord. You're keeping heavenly minded. You're keeping your mind on what does God say about this situation? Whose report will I believe? Will I believe the report of the world or will I believe the report of the Lord? And uh, look, this is a time in terms of the reward. I know we, we're all aware of these promises, but it's something that I've built my ministry life on, which is in Matthew chapter 6. And it talks about there rewarded prayer, rewarded fasting. So that's an encouragement for you. Rewarded giving, and I believe also rewarded loving, rewarded serving. And it says the father who sees in secret, what will he do? He will reward you openly. So, so I'm saying to you, this is a time when you've got to be believing. Yes, Lord, thank you. The, the manifestation of my reward is at hand. Thank you, Lord. This is a time when I'm going to receive what I've been believing for. You know the challenge of, of Mark 11, 22 to 24. You have to believe you've received it before you actually get it. And so this is what the attitude of heart, the, the attitude of expectancy. If you say, Lord, I've been praying about this for a long time, but Lord, now, Lord, I believe this is my season. This is my time, Lord, to receive the reward of the Lord into my life. Hallelujah. And if you sow as a lifestyle, you will certainly reap. I mean, farmers have tough times. They go years without crops. But then when a good year comes, and that's what I believe, just the same as uh, uh, Joseph saw the good years and then some bad years. But I think uh, now it's a time where there's been some tough years, but there's also going to be for those who have been faithful and in faith, then we're going to experience this reward of the Lord. Hallelujah. And I want to encourage people. You may not have a great title. Uh, you may not have, you know, be the chairman of a great organization or a great worldwide business or something. But I believe that the Lord is going to touch people like Ruth. Those who have been faithful in little. Those who have been faithful in secret. Those that have been willing to humble themselves and, and, and even wash the feet of others the way Jesus did. People who have been good committed followers, people who have been good, committed team members are going to be rewarded and promoted. And, and you know, I, I say not only to you that are online, but I declare as a, as a global thing, there are faithful ministers of the gospel. You know, men and women raised up in leadership, pastoral leadership, and, and, and they haven't really got the reward of their labor. You know, they, they, they deserve more fruit. They, they deserve more souls. They deserve uh, bigger churches. So they, they deserve, uh, you know, the, the greater fruit. And I tell you, just like Ruth was taken from one level of living to another, because those who are faithful in little are going to be rewarded with greater resources and greater results in this season. So you be ready to be one of those. And, uh, and I believe that God will meet you right where you are. I want to say that people who are involved in church life, uh, those who are involved with Good Samaritan ministry, the reward of the Lord is going to come upon them. The reward of the Lord. So, in other words, um, if you're involved with, 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 with helping people get better, get healthier, whether it's in their physical body or in their inner being or whether they're poor and you're helping the poor, I believe God is going to bless people that help the Jews. This is something in particular that God spoke to me about. He said, Nick, those who bless the Jews, I, I'm anointing right now that Genesis 12 covenant. And so you may not know any Jewish people in Australia, but there are Jews in Israel who need your prayer. There are Jews in Israel, you know, who would probably welcome even $10 uh, through a, a, an honourable and respectable uh, organisation that you could uh, uh, you could give toward, but I believe there's a smile of God on that particular covenant uh, in this season. But those who are involved in Good Samaritan ministry, those who are trying to just be a blessing to others, uh, I believe God's going to resource them the same as He did the Good Samaritan. Now, do you know what resources the Good Samaritan has? If you look at that story, he had five resources. 
that God had given him that he was able to continue in this ministry. And these are what the five resources were. The first one was oil. And we know that mm. uh, is typical of the anointing and of healing and so on. The second was wine, which is talking about joy and courage and healing. The same as oil is also about healing. He had money. That's a third resource. The fourth resource he had was transport. He had a donkey. And uh, when you want to do something for the glory of God, God's going to help you get to where you need to be in order to do that which God has called you to do. And then the final thing was favor. Because he went to the inn and he said, if this is not enough money, well, do me the favor and the honor of just letting me pile up a bit of debt and I'll come back and fix it up next time I'm in town. So those who are involved with Good Samaritan ministry, God is going to reward them and bless them with these five resources, oil, wine, money, transport, and favor. Hallelujah. So, uh, so set yourself a goal this year. I'm going to wake up and I'm going to say, Lord, who can I bless today? Because this is a season. Not only for Genesis 12, 3, bless the Jews and I'll bless you, but I believe it's an even broader than that. Lord, help me to be a blessing. And Lord, I know I'll be blessed in order to be a blessing. Amen. So the last thing uh, that I will say in terms of uh, the reward of the Lord, um, I think I'm coming back tomorrow night and I'll talk something about divine manifestation and uh, as the third aspect of what this season is about. And I'm also going to share with you some prayers, very simple biblical prayers that God has laid on my heart in, in this area of uh, provoking the manifestations of God in our lives. But this last one, uh, in terms of the reward of the Lord that I'll share tonight, 3 John 2, those who are involved in 3 John 2 ministry. Now, we know 3 John 2. It, it, unfortunately, it works in the negative as well as the positive, same as sowing. You sow negative, you reap negative. You sow positive, you reap positive. 3 John 2, uh, it says, Beloved, I pray above all things that you'll prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So those who are involved in that ministry, Bethel call it Sozo ministry. There, there might be other names for it where you're helping people have a healthy soul those people will be blessed and prospered. Those that they minister to will have the reward of a renewed mind uh, that leads to a life that overflows with blessing. And uh, people are not receiving the reward of the Lord because they're all screwed up inside. And this is something that I believe the church should be helping people with, that they can uh, live a happier, healthier, more positive life and then not just be a consumer where they're, they're wanting to receive, but where they can be a giver and a contributor uh, to not only the church, but to the world around them. So I believe if you'll uh, take hold of these things, that you can move from Haggai chapter one to Haggai chapter two by making the right decisions that will lead to long-term good consequences. And that secondly, that this is a time of the reward of the Lord. And if you get hold of some of these principles. There are principles in the Bible that tell you how you can experience the reward of the Lord, how you can draw yourself, prepare yourself, position yourself to be in that place where you're ready to receive the manifestation of the reward of the Lord. And uh, this is what I've been sharing with you, those, uh, uh, those ways to do that. So uh, I want to pray for you right now that all of you, that have heard this tonight, there'll be things that God has spoken to your heart that you'll be ready to receive all that God has. So, Father, thank you, Lord, for the reward of the Lord. And, Lord, as I just hand back to Pastor Lawani and Pastor Newton, Lord, I just pray the manifestations of the reward of the Lord be given. There's people here we heard about God is faithful and he doesn't quit halfway through something. But, Lord, there are people that are also part of this prayer meeting who have also been faithful, like Ruth was faithful. And I pray now the heavens open and the outpouring, Lord, for those who have been faithful in tithing and giving and serving and loving and, and being a blessing, 
Lord, that now their reward will come forth. Now their harvest will come forth. Now their blessing will come forth. Just as it said in Isaiah 40, verse 10, and in that wonderful uh, Hebrews verse, Lord God, uh, Hebrews 10 and verse 37, for yet in a very little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. And he is coming with his reward. And I speak that over these people and all that they are connected to, their families, their churches, their ministries, their businesses, in the name of Jesus, the reward of the Lord be loosed upon them and multiplied to them in Jesus' name. Amen.